The FedLife Podcast is presented by Serving Those Who Serve, a fiduciary fee-based financial planning firm serving federal government employees and retirees all over the country. This podcast is for informational purposes only and is not intended to be taken as financial advice. All listeners should consult their personal advisors before taking any action. The opinions expressed by our hosts are their own and do not reflect the views, policies, or position of Raymond James. Securities are offered through Raymond James Financial Services, Inc., member FINRA, SIPC. Investment advisory services are offered through Raymond James Financial Services Advisors, Inc. Serving those who serve is not a registered broker-dealer and is independent of Raymond James Financial Services, Inc. And now, here are your hosts. Dan Seip serves as a branch manager for Raymond James Financial Services and Serving Those Who Serve. Ed Zerndorfer is our guest and federal benefits expert in the space. Hello and welcome everybody to this episode of the FedLife Podcast. If you're regular, you know me. I'm your host, Dan Seip. Additionally, I'm the branch manager here at Serving Those Who Serve and Lee Seip and Associates. I want to begin, as I always do, by saying thank you. Thank you for taking this time to listen. And above all, thank you for your service to the government, to the country, to me, to everyone. You do not hear that enough, but you will always hear it here. Uh, If you're a regular listener, you know the other thing you will always hear on the FedLife Podcast is my buddy, Ed Zerndorfer, uh, the guru, is back with us again as part of our ongoing mission to reach, teach, and serve you. Once again, we follow Ed's FedZone articles. It gives us one more way to reach and teach. So... Ed, we are talking about one of the things that I know is one of your favorite topics, and that is Roth contributions for younger feds, and specifically how they might be able to qualify for something called the Savers Tax Credit, which I know is one of your other favorite things, which is a credit. So tell us a little bit about what we're going to learn here. Oh, Dan, you are so right. I love the Roth IRA for everyone, but especially young people. You'll find that here in a few moments. And I also love tax credits. Why do I love tax credits? They are a dollar for dollar reduction from your tax liability. And we're going to talk about that savers tax credit in a few moments. Let's talk about the reasons I I love many people love Roth IRAs. Number one, sure. yeah, there's no tax benefit up front. Roth IRA contributions are made with after tax dollars. You put the money in the Roth IRA, you accrue earnings over the years. And those earnings are going to be grow tax free under the following conditions. That when you pull the money out of your Roth IRA, number one, you have to be at least 59 and a half, and it has to be at least five years from January, from the January 1st of the year you made your very first Roth IRA contribution. It only goes back to that first year. Now, Roth IRAs, Dan, have been around since 1998. I'm sure there are employees and retirees and Anybody else listening who've made their first Roth IRA contribution sometime? Let's say they made their first Roth IRA contribution on May 15th, 2006. The five-year Roth IRA contribution meter started as of January 1st, 2006. Go forward five years, brings you to January 1st, 2011. So anytime after January 1st, 2011, that Roth IRA owner, provided he or she is over 59 and a half, can pull the money out of all of their Roth IRAs tax-free, all of them. Even though they made, they made subsequent contributions after 2006, doesn't it have to fulfill the five-year rule for all of subsequent contributions? Only that first. Sure. But the point that t- talking about taking money in the Roth IRA, one of the, another benefit of the Roth IRAs, you don't have to. Roth IRAs are the only type of retirement plan, call it plan, in which you do not have to take the money out when you reach what's called your required beginning date. You have to take the money out of a traditional IRA, 
a traditional retirement account like traditional TSP, but not the Roth IRA, not the Roth IRA. So it's always going to be there just in case after 59 and a half, if you have to take it out. The longer you keep the money in the Roth IRA, the longer it's going to grow tax free in retirement. Gotcha. That's why I encourage younger people, younger sure. people to start putting the money in the Roth IRA because we're talking about a lifetime, a lifetime. Yeah, I know. They could take the idea and say, well, if I put it in now, I'm 26 years old. You know, made my first contribution, let's say for 2023, it's still time, by the way, to make your first contribution to the Roth IRA for 2023 because you have until April 15, 2024 to make your 2023 IRA contribution. But the point is that by the time you're 59 and a half, they would have fulfilled the five year old. But that doesn't mean they should take the money out. Let's. I have an example I'd like to share. Like yeah. example, I, I did it a few moments ago. Let's uh, let's suppose a twenty-five year old, a twenty-five year old, puts in three thousand dollars to their Roth IRA this year. They're going to do it before April fifteenth, two thousand four. They're twenty-five years old, and just taking that three thousand dollar contribution and the way they invest it, they're getting. I'm going to use an annualized return of eight percent. Well, once again. Past performance is not guaranteed, you know, past is guaranteed a future return. I gotta put that in there. That's so, thank you. <laughs> Forty years later, this employee, this young employee, did not touch this Roth IRA. He just left it alone. The three thousand dollars, just the three thousand, that's all they put in for three thousand dollars this year, for this year, for two thousand twenty three. Got an eight percent average, or not getting eight percent year in year out. It's it's going to be our right. annualized return of eight percent. Then, according to my calculator, that three thousand dollars is going to grow to nine hundred and five thousand dollars. That's a lot. Nine hundred and five thousand dollars that they can pull out tax free. Tax free. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot of. Think about it. They put in three thousand dollars every year. How much they have. Absolutely. And the not, only else not, can be tax free. Not you're you're preaching to the choir on that one, brother. Three thousand dollars a a the three thousand dollars. What is that? Ten about ten less than ten dollars a day? Yeah. How much money do we waste on a given day? Oh <laughs> I'm I'm scared to add it up. Now, Ed, your article initially references, you know, recent college grads. So yes. What should they know? What should they be thinking about? The reason that I was referencing recent college grads, because let's suppose they got their first job. They got their first job um, sometime in 2000. Let's say they graduated last spring from college, and they got their first job, let's say, in the fall. It's time to work. Roth IRA contribution. In order to contribute to Roth IRA, we talked about, it talked about the fact that the, the contributions are made with tax dollars. But there is another restriction when it comes to contributing to a Roth IRA, and that is your adjusted gross income has to be below certain amounts. In particular, for 2023, if you want to make your 2023 Roth IRA contribution and you're single or you file a separate household, your adjusted gross income for 2023 has to be below $139,000. $139,000. If you're a recent college, and if you're if you're married finally jointly, it has to be below two hundred twenty eight thousand dollars. If you are, you know, you got your first job in let's say last fall, chances are you did not make more than one hundred thirty nine. Your AGI is going to be below one hundred thirty nine thousand dollars if you're single, and two hundred twenty eight thousand if you're married finally jointly. I think there's a good chance, which means that you are eligible to contribute to a Roth IRA, to a Roth IRA. All right. And you, and you, get, you, got, you do have a choice. You do have a choice. You can contribute to a traditional deductible IRA because your contribution you make would be deductible. But to me, the real benefit of the Roth IRA is the fact that down the line, down the line, you're going to pull the money out tax free. The back, the benefit is going to be on the back end. Also, because of these adjusted gross income limits, 
this recent college graduate last year eventually will earn more money, a higher salary, to the point they would not be able to contribute anymore to the Roth IRA. Whatever is there is going to stay, but no more contributions because they don't have their adjusted gross income is too large. Yeah, that's a that, we call that a problem. In a way, it's not a problem. You're earning more money, you just can't benefit from the Roth IRA. So I really encourage, I really encourage younger people, recent college grads, to contribute to the Roth IRA and leave the traditional IRA alone. Now, just one other one other thing I have to throw in here. If you're a federal employee, no matter what your AGI is, you are allowed to contribute to the Roth TSP. We have to clear up a misunderstanding. I've heard this many times from employees. Oh, because I contribute to the Roth TSP, I'm not allowed to contribute to Roth IRA. That's not true. Roth TSP has its contribution limits. Roth IRAs have their contribution limits. They're totally separate. The Roth TSP, there's no adjusted gross income limits here. Whether if you're a federal employee and your adjusted gross income is twenty five thousand dollars a year or your adjusted gross income is $300,000 a year, you are always allowed to contribute to the Roth TSP. But when it comes to the Roth IRA, if your income is too high, your HEI, you're not allowed to contribute to the Roth IRA. But I also want to point out that if you do put the money into the Roth TSP, you are allowed, you are allowed, after 59 and a half, to transfer, do a direct rollover of your Roth TSP to a Roth IRA, there are no tax consequences for doing that. You just now put the money in the Roth IRA. So again, the other employees, most of them who are eligible to contribute to Roth IRA for 2023, in my opinion, should. They have not done so. They had they're listening to this podcast and it's before April 15th, 2024. They still have until April 14th, 2024. That's a week that's that's less than two weeks away to contribute to make their 2023. Roth IRA contribution. Let me give the limits. If they're under age 50, but they probably will be if they're a young person, it's going to be $6,500 is the contribution limit. Gotcha. Um, if, if they happen to be over over 50, they, they, you can throw in another $1,000 at $7,500 limit. One other suggestion, or this is a suggestion, that if you're going to make your 2023 Roth IRA contribution, anybody, anybody listening today, if you are um, eligible to make that contribution because your AGI limits are below the limits I mentioned, um, make sure you tell your Roth IRA custodian that the contribution is for 2023. Ah. Uh, okay. I know, Dan, you, you work with a firm, you're associated with a firm with, with investment yep. uh, brokerage, and you get many people, I'm sure, you and your fellow. We um, always have to clarify stock, what year. So very, you have to make sure that you do it for the right year because if they're not told, it's possible the contribution could be made for 2000. You still make your contribution for 2024, but you got to, you have to specifically say the contribution is for 2020, 2023. Yep. 2020. That's, that's a great tip, folks. Uh, hopefully your, uh, your advisor will ask you, but on the off chance they don't, you know, watch out for yourself because. Literally, in, in the first three months of the year, you could contribute for each tax year, you know, last year and the current year. So that's a great tip, Ed. Now, in your article, you talk about something that, that could happen where somebody's been Johnny on the spot. They made their their Roth contribution for the tax year, and then they're uh, figuring out their taxes. It turns out they made too much money. So what do they have to do here? Yes, they made their 2023 Roth IRA contribution. They made their 2023 Roth IRA contribution. They thought they were below the adjusted gross income limitations. Let me go through those again, just to make sure everybody hears what those AGI limits are. If you file a single end of household, you can make a Roth IRA contribution, the full amount of 6,500. If your AGI, I think I may have said 139,000, it's actually 138,000. If your AGI for 2023, Dan, was less gotcha. than 138,000. Now, if your AGI was between $138,001 and 153,000, you can make 
what's called a partial Roth IRA contribution. In IRS publication, I think it's 590, 590-A, they have what's called a worksheet in which if your AGI is between the lower limit and the upper limit, you can make a partial part, you know, like, like let's say $5,000 of this uh, can go in based on your AGI. It's, there's a worksheet there in that publication. But if your AGI is over 150 to 2023, you cannot make a Roth IRA contribution. And for married filing joint, if you're below 218,000, you can make a full Roth IRA contribution. By the way, both spouses can do it. As long as one spouse has earned income, both spouses can contribute to their own Roth IRAs. If they're between two hundred eighteen thousand and one dollar and two hundred twenty eight thousand dollars, you can make what's called a partial Roth IRA contribution, not the full amount, but some based on the. There's a worksheet in IRS publication five ninety dash A in terms of how much they can contribute. If they're over two hundred twenty eight thousand dollars, they cannot make a Roth IRA contribution. Now, I, I want to just mention. Oh, by the way, married filing separate. You don't want to hear the limits, Dan. You don't gotcha. want to hear this. It's ten thousand dollar limit. If your HI is over ten thousand dollars, you cannot contribute. Neither spouse can contribute to a Roth IRA. Ten thousand dollars. Congress is out. Anyway, now this problem has occurred in terms of somebody made their Roth IRA contribution for a given year. They didn't realize that their AGI was too high. So let's say somebody filed their, their 2023, 2023 taxes and they put in, let's say, $6,500 for 2023, and their AGI turned out to be $155,000. They're over the limit. Sure. And they owe, and they filed their taxes. What happens? Will there be a penalty? And actually, it's called a excess contribution penalty of 6%. 6%. What, it, what do I mean by six percent excess contribution penalty? If they, if the, if the um, individual does not withdraw their sixty five hundred dollar contribution to the Roth IRA, what's six percent of sixty five hundred dollars? Three hundred ninety. It's a three hundred ninety dollar penalty. That's per year. For every year they wait to take that money out, they're going to be paying three hundred ninety dollars plus interest. Gotcha. So, what does the person have to do? They have to contact their Roth IRA custodian and tell the Roth IRA custodian, I blow it. I didn't realize there was a limit. I did my taxes, and now I found out that I contributed the $6,500 to the Roth IRA. I shouldn't have. I want to. Is there anything I can do? Anything I can do to change that? And the answer is yes. Actually, two things. One, they can withdraw it. They can tell their IRA, Roth IRA custodian, please take the money out of there. Give me back the six with the sixty five hundred dollars. What about the the sixty five hundred dollars was made with after tax dollars, so that's not going to be taxable. What about the earnings? Maybe some of the earnings accrued in there. They they made their sixty five hundred dollars contribution early in two thousand twenty three, and it's accrued, let's say five hundred dollars of earnings during two thousand twenty three. What's going to happen with five hundred dollars? That also has to be that also has to be paid out. Does the person have to pay taxes on it? Yes. A penalty? No. No okay. penalty. They'll get that money. It has to pay tax, and it'll be taxable in, in 2024 when they receive it. There's one other possibility. There's one other possibility that the, that this person that the Roth IRA owner can do: tell their broker. They can tell their their Roth IRA custodian the custodian. I like to recharacterize, recharacterize my Roth IRA contribution. I don't want it to be a Roth IRA contribution. I want to make it a traditional IRA contribution. Now, this is, it's the opposite of converting. You could, when you convert a traditional IRA to Roth IRA, you're making a traditional IRA into a Roth IRA. This is just the opposite. You're taking gotcha. your Roth IRA and recharacterizing it to be a traditional IRA. Now, does that have tax consequences? And the answer is no, no, provided that the $6,500 that went in there plus earnings is recharacterized 
before the tax filing deadline with extension, which is October 15th, 2024. Gotcha. Now, what's going to happen, though, is that this 65 hours plus earnings will be put into what's called a non-deductible traditional IRA. Non-deductible IRA. Again, why is it not deductible? Going for not deductible IRA because the sixty-five hundred dollars that went in there was already taxed. Then we got the earnings, which have not been taxed. With a non-deductible traditional IRA, the earnings that go in there are accrued are pre-tax dollars. The contributions are not. What gotcha. other thing have you done? And this, I'm putting all my tax hat here. In any year that you make a non-deductible traditional IRA contribution, or in a year you could you recharacterize a Roth IRA contribution to a non-deductible traditional IRA, you have to file a form, IRS form. And that IRS form is 8606. 8606. So an example here, the individual who contributed $6,500 to the Roth IRA and found out that their AGI is too high to allow him or her to do that, they're going to recharacterize that Roth IRA contribution. Let's say, Dan, you are the broker. And it says, yeah, we can recharacterize it. We'll make it into a non-nutrition IRA. But there's something that all brokers should tell these individuals who recharacterize their Roth IRAs. There's an IRS form has to be followed. IRS form 8606. 8606. Gotcha. And the person's going to say, but Dan, I already filed my taxes. It's too late. No, it's not. Because you can file the form 8606 by itself. So you filed your taxes. File your ta- you filed your taxes. That's no problem. Just download the form 8606. Fill it out, or have your accountant fill it out, and then send it off to IRS. The address will be on there. Okay? Gotcha. So that, that'll solve the problem. But it's very important because if you don't file that Form 8606, IRS has no record of the contributions that went in, in, into that IRA were already taxed. You know what they're going to do? When they're going to tax it all. They're going to tax, tax it all. Yep. I ain't paying tax at one time, Dan. Paying tax on the same money twice? No, nope. but no. Okay. So we mopped all that up. Now let's get to some good news for people. So let's talk about the Savers Tax Credit. What is that and how can somebody get it? The Savers Tax Credit is something that's been around for a few years, in which Congress is, in, is encouraging individuals to contribute to something when it comes to their retirement, Contribute, contributing to their a 401k plan, contributing to the TSP, contributing to an IRA. And to make the incentive attractive, they, Congress said, we will give you a tax credit up to $2,000. $2,000 tax credit that will be, that will decrease your tax liability if you contribute to something, something like a qualified retirement plan, 401k plan, 403b plan, the TSP. Or and or an IRA. It can be an IRA. Now, the problem is, once again, like many tax credits, there are AGI limitations. And if your AG, if your adjusted gross income for the year is too high, you're not allowed to take this tax credit. Let me just run through this. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna concentrate on those individuals who file as single. If during 2000 and 2023, if your AGI was over $36,000, $36,500, that's your adjusted gross income, a total of $36,500 or more, you cannot take this tax credit. To get the full benefit, you got to be below, 20, your AGI has to be below $21,750. He said, that's not a lot of money, but that's my point about the young people. If they're getting their first job, sure, they started working in, in, the, in the summer or the fall, chances are they don't have a high AGI. They don't have a high AGI. And they'd be eligible for this credit, for this tax credit, this tax credit. Now, if someone listening today had, you know, 
This is in Skyrim. They're making a Roth IRA contribution for 2003. They put money into the T. They put money into the TSP when they were first hired, and their AGI is uh, below the twenty one thousand seven hundred fifty. Or it happened to be married, you're below forty three thousand five hundred. Let's suppose you already filed your taxes. No problem. After April fifteenth, amend your taxes to take this tax credit. Many people are not aware of this tax credit. Sure. It's, 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 it's many people, especially those who don't do their own taxes, they're not even aware of this. So, you know, if you, if you haven't filed your taxes yet, once again, you have until April 15, or if you have to file for an extension, do so. But then you make sure you use, keep this uh, type, this tax, the Sabres tax credit in mind. Absolutely. And feds. You know, you may be listening to us right now going, hey, man, I'm 50 years old. I've been in the job for years. You got kids. You got kids that you have invested in their education. Pass this along to them. You know, what we're trying to do is we're trying to help all our feds, but also the whole family. So be sure to uh, be sure to pass this along to your your children who are now out of college, hopefully getting those first jobs. Ed. I've said it before, nobody writes this stuff but you, and that is awesome. We're very grateful that you are the resource that you are for us and for feds in general. It's fantastic. Folks, that's a wrap. We are serving those to serve, so hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel and on Spotify if you're just listening. Remember to share it with your friends and a few strangers. And don't forget the live webinars every week. Just go to stwserve.com. You will see that blue webinar button, touch it, it turns red, click it, you're going to get the whole menu. The guru will come to you, reach you where you are, teach you where you are, above all, serve you where you are. Sign up for one, sign up for all, share it with your friends. They will thank you. Be sure to read Ed every single week in the Fed Zone. That's fed-zone.com. So wrapping up for today, for my buddy Ed, the crew at Serving This Serve, and me, Dan Sight, good luck, Godspeed, and above all, remember, it is your fed life. So make it a great one because you deserve it. Stay well, everybody. We are out. <laughs>